David, I've heard this, and I'm trying to decide whether it's a myth or not, but the bullet weight versus twist rate and what you can shoot and what you can't shoot and what's going to be accurate and what isn't. And we went out and had these three different guns in 223 built. We have a 1 in 7, a 1 in 9, and a 1 in 12 twist. And that's why I asked you to, you know, let's shoot some different bullet right. weights through it. What did we learn? Well, we actually learned a few different things. Uh, first of all, let me clarify some things. Some of the people uh, seem to believe that it's actually the bullet weight uh, that dictates what type of rifling twist they need. It is actually not the bullet weight. It's actually the length or the amount of bearing surface of that bullet on the rifling. And when we start talking about rifling twists, as in a one in seven, that means that the rifling actually makes one complete revolution within seven inches of length. A 1 in 12, it'll complete one revolution in 12 inches of length. So a 1 in 7 is a fast twist. That is correct. Okay. A 1 in 12 is a slow twist. And what we have historically been told is the, the uh, lighter weight the bullet, the shorter the bearing surface requires a slower twist to, to be able to stabilize that bullet. Whereas the heavier uh, projectiles, the longer projectiles, require the faster twist. So what we did was we, we took these guns that you had specifically built, the one in seven, the one in nine, and the one in 12, and we shot three different grain weights. Okay. We shot a 40 grain, a 55 grain, and a 75 grain weight. And that's a pretty good representation of 223 ammo. Yeah, that, that's the, the, the vast majority of what you're gonna see uh, on the commercial shelves is gonna be represented by those three grain weights. So a 40 grain bullet, which would be a prairie dog load, a, yep. a varmint load, what gun performed best with that? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, we found that yes, the, the 1 in 12, the slower twist, did produce slightly, and I emphasize slightly better groups with that 40 grain. But actually, the 1 in 9 and the 1 in 7 still performed very admirably. As a matter of fact, the 1 in 7 and 1 in 9 had almost identical group size. Okay. So on the other end of the spectrum, what worked well with heavy bullets? Okay, the heavy bullets. Um, the 1 in 7 and the 1 in 9 worked you know very well with that but what we did find which is an old myth that we've kind of proven true that the 75 grain will not stabilize in the 1 in 12. We actually were trying to uh, sight the gun in at 100 yards couldn't even find the impact we had to bring it back to uh, 25 yards and we're seeing key holing. So it's really not a myth it's a fact. It is absolutely a fact. Yep. So if you were going to buy one gun to shoot hopefully a variety of 223 through and given uh, availability or lack of availability of 223 you're going to buy what you can find what would you uh, buy for a twist rate on a gun? Uh, I, I would be comfortable anywhere between a 1 in 7 and a 1 in 9 twist. Okay so that's uh, gives you a little leeway there and that's going to cover pretty much what's being made out there today. Uh, absolutely yes. And all the AR type platforms are in that ballpark. Yes, uh, yes, they are, unless you get one specially made that you want to shoot those lightweight bullets. Okay. All right, so one in seven to one in nine, you're going to have something that's going to perform well, and you can shoot a bunch of different ammo in it. I think we really learned something here. Uh, I think we did. That's good.